here we go, here we go. We are live, we are live. I'm just gonna do some quick housekeeping here to check, make sure that audio's good, all that's good. Here we go, here we go. We are, we are live. I'm just gonna... So you might hear a couple things. Hold on, let me pivot this a little bit more this way so y'all can see me a little better. Okay, I think that should be good right there. And I'm live over here on Facebook. So if you're joining from over here, I'm also live over here on Facebook, facebook.com slash Massive Action Movement. Uh, you can go check out the live stream there. But today is going to be a, what's up, what's up, everybody, get in here. We're giving everybody a couple seconds to get in here. We're live over here on Facebook, too. So if you want to go check it out on Facebook, you definitely go check it out on Facebook. Um, we got a great topic today. If you're coming in, we got a great topic today. We're talking about how to find your passion and purpose step by step. And um, if you really want to know how to do this, this is going to be a great live stream for you because a lot of people, the biggest thing or biggest mistake they make, and for y'all joining over here, I'm looking over here at Facebook. One of the biggest mistakes that people make is they, they go into the business world, and they don't really have any direction. And they find themselves, I guess you could say, discouraged a lot of the time because they're like, man, how can I keep that passion? How can I think, keep things going? And I think that's the thing that we're going to focus on today is how to keep that passion going how to have a passion and purpose, and how to really build a lifestyle where not only are you doing business, but you're also building a lifestyle that you love. And this probably is one of the biggest topics. Now, last week I talked about this. I told you that I said that, you know, mindset plus skill set equals success. I'm going to say that again. Mindset plus skill set equals success. And the biggest advantage of understanding this is that while we can give you all the skill sets, and over the course of these live streams, I told you I'm going to give you all the skills and stuff that you can use to be successful. My whole goal is to help build one million seven-figure businesses, and I want you to be one of them. So my goal is you can you can do all this stuff, you can uh, make all this, have all these skills, and learn all this knowledge. But until you have a firm grasp on certain concepts, it's going to be very difficult for you to be successful. What's going on, everybody? Go ahead and get in here. We're going to get started real quick. What's on? I see y'all. I see y'all getting in, but basically, um, for y'all just getting in there, somebody's trying to call me right now. Gotta ignore that. But for y'all just jumping in here, for y'all just getting in the live stream, we're basically talking about how to find your passion and purpose. So if this is something you really want to know about, this is going to be a good stream for you. All right. So I want to start, and to everybody on Facebook, make sure you drop a Y, everybody on YouTube. Make sure you drop a Y if you follow me so far and you're ready to learn about how to find your passion and purpose. I'm going to be switching between a couple different cameras and stuff like that. So if you're watching over here on Instagram or if you're watching here on Facebook or YouTube, just know that's what I'm doing when you see me looking around. So let's talk about how to find your passion and purpose. So why is finding your passion and purpose so important? I'm going to tell you a couple of things I'm going to talk about today and why it is so important and why it's so valuable for you to start being somebody who looks for your passion and purpose. Now, one is basically you're going to be able to be motivated no matter what. When that doesn't sound amazing, like no matter what happens, you'll be motivated. You'll be a person who can look at a situation, a scenario, and no matter what's happening in your life, whether people are doubting you, friends or family don't believe in you, it doesn't really matter what the hell happens in your life. You're going to stay motivated. And typically when most people think about this success thing, the real problem is they think of motivation in the wrong way. So in this live stream today, I'm going to tell you exactly how you can become more motivated. Because to be honest, if you rely on what traditionally gets people motivated, if you rely on somebody, say, on the Internet or anything to keep you motivated, then you're going to always need that source of motivation. And just like, say, a drug or something. When you first watch that video, when you first come in contact with that content creator, it's going to be amazing. It's going to give you a boost. It's going to give you such a high. But then over time, that's going to fade. And you're going to lose that motivation. So what I want to talk about here today are ways to build really deep, deep, deep motivation. So in the long run, no matter what's going on, whether it's business, whether it's regular life, whether something happens in your family, you're going to always be able to come back to that central motivation. So we're going to talk about that today. We're also going to talk about building a habitat for success. Now, what does a habitat for success mean? This, this basically means that you're going to put yourself in an environment for you to succeed. And if you don't put yourself in this environment, this is another one of the reasons that people find themselves unsuccessful. Now, I'm not just talking about just moving where you're from, because I want you to remember, if you remember my story, I did this from sleeping on the floor of my mother's house, so I didn't even move out the location. But this concept I'm going to talk about in the story today 
will help you no matter where you're at. I don't care if you're at your mom's house. I don't care if you're in corporate America. I don't care if you're sleeping on your friend's couch. I don't care if you're homeless. It doesn't matter. Well, if you're watching this, congratulations. It doesn't matter. This is one of the key essential things that you need to do in order to help you be successful. And a lot of people overlook this. A lot of people miss this. But I'm going to tell you, this is going to be a powerful tool that you can use in order to be successful. Um, with that being said, I'm going to talk about one of the reasons people can't find their, their purpose and their passion. I'm going to talk about how you can find your purpose and passion. And I'm going to talk about how specifically, once you find your purpose and passion, how we can literally chart that. I'm going to give you some practical ways to chart exactly how you can find your destiny in life. And it's going to be super, super powerful. So I'm glad you joined us today. I, I decided to do the format a little bit different because I did it the other ways, the other times. But I decided to do this format a little bit different today because I wanted to give you something that's very powerful and just talk with you. Just sit here and talk with you at the house about mindset, about passion, about purpose. So if that makes sense, if you're watching on Facebook, you're watching on YouTube, if that makes sense, you can drop a Y in the chat and be like, that makes sense for us to talk about how to find your passion and purpose. And I'm going to go right into the content and talk about how we can do that. My boy, the world's most hated promoter. So I'm going to go right into the content and talk about exactly how we can start finding our passion and purpose. Like I said, if you're in there, send this out to people. Let them know because I guarantee the information that I'm about to discuss here is really going to be a game changer. All right. So let's talk about the prerequisite for everything. Let's talk about the one thing you got to have no matter what. Uh, my boy Mercedes Letterman just hopped in. Let's talk about the one thing you got to have no matter what if you want to be successful. What is the most important thing, the most vital thing that you have to have is what I call a habitat for success. Now, why is this such a powerful concept? Why is this such a powerful concept? Can anybody guess why this is such a powerful concept? Right? I want to find my passion. You already got your passion and purpose. Mercedes Letterman, y'all check my boy out. If you have not, stream his music. That pressure just dropped. I'm definitely uh, jamming that pressure. I wish I could put it in the background or something so people could hear it, but I'm definitely jamming that pressure. But... Why do you think a habitat for success is so important? Now, one of the biggest things, I'm going to tell y'all this. This is some real shit I'm about to tell y'all. One of the biggest things I learned, if you study animals, is that an animal can't thrive out of its environment. It is literally designed to survive in a certain environment. And when you move that animal out of that environment, what happens? The animal dies, right? So if you think about, if you think about say, for example, an animal that's supposed to grow up in the forest and it has certain foods or things that it has in the forest. I'm about to bust this live stream down. What up, Natty B? Appreciate you for dropping through it. So if you think about a certain animal that is uh, in a forest or something like that, if you move it to another environment, it's not successful. So the first thing we got to look at is we got to say, how do I create a habitat for success? And there's very practical ways that we do this. And so this is why it's our first concept that we're exploring here today is like, what is it to create a habitat of success? So there's two parts to this. First, we have to create an ecosystem of positive emotions. I, oh, appreciate it, Natty B. Appreciate it. I got my boys in here, Mercedes Lennon. Y'all some characters. I love y'all, though. <laughs> bust, bust this stream down. But basically, an ecosystem of positive emotions. Now, I told y'all all the time that when I first started off, I was at my mom's house. And this was not a positive environment. What I mean by that, the the ideas and stuff that were put out into the world in front of me were not very positive. So, for example, people said, you, you need to go back to school. You're not going to make it. Uh, people talked about, you know, maybe you should go get a regular job. These are kind of just the ideas that are coming through. I see some people coming in. Sexy Mandela. What's up, Sexy Mandela? Uh, oh, they left. But anyway, but uh, so when I was at my mom's house, there was all these things that were going on and they weren't they weren't positive, but it was weighing on my emotional state. And I don't know if you know this, but your emotions are like addictions. So basically, whatever emotion that you hold on for a long time, you're going to tend to continue to love that emotion or want to express that emotion, even if it's negative. And this is what really trips a lot of people out. Even if it's negative, what's up, awesome sauce? Even if it's negative, you'll continue to do this over and over and over again. And this is what really stops a lot of people from being successful because a lot of people don't understand just by you complaining all the time, just by you talking about shit all the time, you're going to get addicted to that emotion and subconsciously without even knowing it. This is stuff that you can look up subconsciously without you even knowing it. You're going to start perpetuating that emotion. So I know anybody who's ever seen this. Have you ever been around some people who 
They're negative all the time. It doesn't matter how positive shit is. No matter how life is going, you can literally make millions of dollars. If you go to them, they're going to find something negative. Has anybody experienced that? Drop a Y if you've experienced somebody who no matter what good news you brought them, they were always negative. Yeah, drop a Y, Facebook, YouTube, drop a Y. But basically, if you've experienced that, drop a Y. I know I have. I love my mom to death, but I'm going to tell you honestly, whenever I used to talk about certain shit, she used to be like, well, you know, you got to watch out for that. I know you experienced that the world's most hated promoter. But uh, so the thing is, the first thing we got to understand when we find our passion and purpose, we have to create an ecosystem of positive emotions. And so how do you do this? How do you do this when you're in an environment that's not conducive to it? Because all of us, it's easy for us as, say, oh, um, you, hear, you hear motivational speakers or something say, hey, you just got to move out that environment. Well, that shit's not easy. Like, I didn't have the ability to move out the environment of my mom's house. So what I had to do, going back to this first concept, a habitat of success, I had to create an ecosystem of positive emotions. Now, the way I did this and the way you can start doing this is, well, you're doing one version of it right now. Literally, you're watching content like this. If you're watching content like this, you're already starting to do this first thing, creating a habitat of success. So basically, remember, a habitat is where something lives. So a success, think of success like an animal. We're going to create a habitat, an environment for success to live. Success does not thrive in a place void of positive emotions. Does that make sense? Everybody following where I'm getting at here. So if success is the vehicle, it's the animal, it's the thing, if we create an ecosystem or a habitat for it, then what's going to happen is we can cultivate the success. We can give it a place to grow. What's going on? What's going on, everybody? So we're going to give it a place to grow. So this is the ecosystem of positive emotions. Now I'm going to tell you how you're going to do this. So the first thing you're going to do is you have to completely remove yourself from situations that have negative thinking attached to them. I know it's difficult. I know it's very difficult. A lot of times we want to complain about shit. We want to talk about shit. We want to say that this happened with our friend. This person fucked me over. It doesn't matter because the point is, even if it's true, and this is a very important point, even if it's true, it is not helpful. I want y'all to take this with y'all. And this is something powerful that really changed my life. Even if something is true, we have to ask ourselves, is it something that I should dwell on? And is it going to help me get to my objectives? So, for example, would it be difficult for me to come from sleeping in my mother's house? People said it would be difficult because I'm black and all this type of stuff. Let's say that's true. Let's just say that's true. Dwelling on it will not help me become successful. Does that make sense? Dwelling on it won't make me successful. If I sit back and talk about these things, it doesn't make me successful. So even if things are negative, the whole goal is to try to addict yourself to the positive emotions. Remember a couple seconds ago, I said that it, whatever emotions that you hold on to, you become addicted to them. So people who like to be negative, they're going to continue to stay negative. <laughs> That's just what it is. I just know people like this all the time. And people who tend to be positive, you've probably also on the opposite end of the spectrum, seen people. What's going on? What's, on, what's going on? Just call me Raina. What's going on? People who tend to be positive, stay positive. And I know you've seen these people. I know you've seen these people. You could talk to them in the middle of the day. Like, hey, how's it going? Hey, I'm, I'm doing awesome. These people are addicted to positive emotions, provided they're not like covering up on some deep insecurity or some other bullshit, but they're addicted to positive emotions. So in order to do this, one, we have to use affirmations. Now, I know a lot of people think affirmations are corny, and I'm one of the people who was definitely a person who thought that way. But I'm going to tell you when my perspective changed, when somebody told me this, they said, whether you say positive affirmations or negative affirmations, you do it. So if you say that this shit is corny, this shit is stupid, um, um, I can't do it, I'm not successful, I'm not that type of person, then you're doing affirmations in the wrong direction. It's fucking up your life. And you're creating an ecosystem of negative emotions. This is key. You're creating an ecosystem of negative emotions. Last week when we talked about the seven mindsets, I told you about your different personality layers. So the different personality layers at the deepest layer to have an identity level change where entrepreneurship is you, you don't have to think about it. You're not like, oh, well, now I'm going to wake up and be an entrepreneur. I'm going to do my entrepreneur thing. Or I'm going to do my success thing. Or I'm going to do my motivation thing. It simply is you. And the first part is this habitat of success, which starts with an ecosystem of positive emotions. Now, in order to do this, we want to have statements. And I'm going to talk about towards the end of this, how you create a Eularian destiny. The word Eularian destiny. And it's going to show you exactly how to find and map your passion and purpose if you feel like you haven't found it yet. If not, just hang out with me. I got a lot of great content coming your way. So first is the ecosystem of positive emotions. Basically, we have to create affirmations that are the way that we want to be. 
the lifestyle we want to be. We call it going to our final form. So I was on the phone with my good friend Country Cowboy today, and we was talking about this, and he was like, man, you know, I want to be in my final form. And I think about the best version that I could possibly be, how does that person talk? What does that person do? What type of value do they provide to the world? And by doing this, hey, what's up, Jonathan? Good to see you. What, how, do they, how do they provide this value to the world? And I think of all those things, I make affirmations based on that. This is the very base level of finding your passion and purpose, because remember what I said, we need to create an environment where, bless up, bless up, brother, appreciate it. We need to create an environment that success can thrive. So before we get deep and we talk about like the pain period, we talk about your life's mission, we talk about your Eularian destiny, as it's called, we have to create the ecosystem for it to thrive. Does this make sense? Drop a wife, that makes sense. Drop a wife, it makes sense that we got to create, we got to prepare the vessel to receive. If we're not, if we're not ready to receive, it doesn't matter what I talk about on this channel. It doesn't matter what I talk about to Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. What's going to end up happening is you're going to try to apply this information and it's not going to be ready. You're not going to be ready to use it. Does that make sense? If y'all follow me, drop a Y in the chat. See my boy, world's most hated promoter, drop the Y in the chat. Yeah, that's, that's what it is, y'all. That's, that's what it is. Most people, they're just not ready. So let's talk about the next part, which is creating pure energy spaces, which is setting boundaries. And I want y'all to be open-minded with this shit right here. When I first started off, I'm not going to lie to you. A lot of my friends and family was not fucking with the path I was going on. I was one of the smartest kids, and everybody saw me as the one that was like the prodigal son. I was supposed to go to college. I was supposed to go and get a degree and become this engineer or lawyer or something like that and really change the world. And to be honest, I didn't feel like that was me. I didn't feel like that was me at all. So when I dropped out of school, a lot of people, they were resistant to that. Now, we've talked about social conditioning in the past. A lot of people were conditioned to believe that's the only way to be successful. And if you've been in the world long enough, you know that a lot of people are conditioned to be like, this is the one way you got to be successful because they don't understand the other way. I didn't have any entrepreneurs in my family, so of course they didn't fucking know the way that I was going, right? Now, with that being said, what I had to do is cut a lot of my friends and family off. That didn't mean I cut them out of my life completely. What's up, Erica? Good to see you. That didn't mean I cut them out of my life completely. What it meant was that I took the opportunity to distance myself from them because, like I said, I understood I had to create an ecosystem of positive emotions. Now, I'm going to give y'all a silver lining in this. A lot of my friends and family were really close now. A lot of them have come back into my life, but it was because I learned to establish healthy boundaries. I'm going to give y'all a quote from one of my favorite books. I wish I could grab it real quick. Maybe I can grab it. One second. I'll grab it real quick if I can find it real quick. Um, where is it at? Here it goes. Okay. So this book right here, if y'all looking at this, this book right here, The Disease to Please. It's an amazing book. And it's a line in this book, The Disease to Please. And it's an amazing line in this book. If you're somebody who's feeling like you're a people pleaser, you don't know how to set boundaries, there's a great line that I took. I was like, dang, this shit changes everything. I'm not going to lie to you. And it was the moment that you find yourself being nice versus being real, you get yourself into trouble. I'm going to say that one more time. The moment you find yourself being nice versus being real, you get yourself into trouble. So what does that mean in a practical sense? My family said, hey, Princeton, you need to go live your life this way. I could be nice to my mother. I could be nice to my friends and be like, you know what? You're right. I'm going to go live my life. I'm going to get a whole college degree. Expand. <laughs> I'm going to get a whole college degree. Right. Just because my mother thinks it's good. You know what? I'm going to hang out with these people just because my friends and family will like it. Right. What you're trying to do is be nice to the people around you. But internally in your soul, you feel like, well, that's not really what I fuck with. You're not being real. You can be nice to people. Like I have friends. I have family. Like if my friend is stranded on the side of the, the freeway, fucking right. I'm going to go get them. That just makes sense. If somebody is is good to me in life. I'm going to look out for you. If you're my partner, you don't got no place to sleep. Here's the couch. If you hungry and you need something to eat, I got you. That's what the fuck it is, right? We're friends. But at the same time, I'm not going to be nice at the expense of my long term goals and what I want to do in life. So all the boundary simply is. If you're watching this, all the boundary simply is, is I'm going to be real with myself. 
What do I like? What do I not like? And then I'm going to tell you that if you cross something that I do not like, I'm going to set a boundary. So going back to what I said, if my friends and family, they're in college, I mean, they want me to go to college, but I don't want to do it. It's not what I see myself going. Then what ends up happening is I say to myself, you know what? I'm going to have to tell my friends and family, hey, if you can't fuck with the direction I'm going, I'm going to have to distance myself from you. Now, when that person understands that boundary is willing to respect that boundary, boom, they can come back in your life. Now, these two things are crucial. Just to review this first concept, habitat of success. Remember, success is like an animal, which means that we got to create an environment. We got to create a habitat where it can thrive. You take an animal out of its habitat, it dies. A successful person has a certain habitat that they thrive in. And everybody I know that's successful, all my friends and family, everybody who's successful, they live in a certain habitat. How do we do that? Ecosystem of positive emotions. This is affirmations. Keeping positive no matter what. As crazy as it sounds, keeping positive no matter what. If somebody breaks into a car that I own, I'm going to say, hey, what could I have done better? This sounds stupid. Sounds stupid. But what I'm saying is it's not about it being true or factual, bad or good. It's about what is going to be most useful for me to be successful in the long term. Are you following that? Drop a Y if you're following what I'm saying. There. Drop a Y in the chat if you follow that. Drop a Y in the chat if you follow. I'm over here on Facebook, too. So if y'all on Facebook, remember, I'm on Facebook, too. So drop a wire in the chat if that makes sense, what we're doing as far as creating this habitat for success. Bet, exactly. Learn how to master your emotions because it's not so much about, it's not so much about, oh yeah, is it right or wrong? It's about controlling your emotions. So with that being said, boundaries, setting boundaries. Before we do that, doesn't matter what happens. If we can't set healthy boundaries, I don't give a damn what's going on. I don't give a fuck what you do. If you can't set healthy boundaries, what's going to happen is, People are going to step over your boundaries and then you're going to always feel this internal, this internal like dissonance where you're like, man, I don't I feel like I'm doing stuff, but I'm not doing stuff for me. And until we can be at least selfish enough to do stuff for us, we're never going to be successful. Great quote before we move on to the next one. You have to make yourself strong. <laughs> I love that. You have to make yourself strong in order to be strong for others. You have to make yourself strong first before you can be strong for others. And until you do that, until you learn to set boundaries, you're never going to be the person who can get to that level. Just imagine a person that's very successful. Could you see that person being a person who allows everybody around them to tell them what the fuck to do? You can't imagine a person being successful with that. I'm pretty sure you can. not So just think about that. Let's move forward. All right. So next I want to talk about, and I want y'all to be very open minded of what I call the pain period. So most people can't get into their destiny because no pe most people don't want to be bad at something. I got a good friend of mine in the chat right now, Mercedes Letterman. Y'all check his music out. But one thing I remember talking to him a long time ago, he was like, man, you know, he does music. He did amazing, amazing songs. Love his songs. And I was telling him way back when he started, I said, man, you know, the hardest thing about music is a lot of people just want to shit on you in the beginning. I swear to you, if you was in a parking lot, let's say you're in a parking lot right now, you at the flea market or something, and dude walks up to you and says, hey, bro, listen to my mixtape. I don't give a fuck what is on that CD. That literally could be the best shit ever spit on a track. Most people are going to be like, man, get the fuck out of here with this shit. Because you're in the pain period. A lot of people want to be recognized as like this great person, but they don't want to be in the pain period. I don't want to be at a point where people are not recognizing me. I don't want to be a place where people are not listening to me. I don't want to be in a place where people almost laugh at me a little bit because they're like, what the fuck is this person doing? They don't want to be in that pain period. So they never go after their destiny. Now, I'm going to go a little deep with y'all. This is an amazing book. It's over there, too. I'm not going to jump up and get this one, but it's called The Hero of a Thousand Faces. And in this book, they talk about the hero's journey that you go through. And if you've ever watched any great movie or a great story, one concept that they have is the call to adventure. And what's unique about the call to adventure is that it symbols the beginning of your journey. So if you're going on an entrepreneurship journey, the beginning of your journey starts with the call to adventure. And this is going to go through the pain period. It doesn't say that just because you go out there in the world, you're going to be successful out the gate. That's what I think about it. I mean, I've lost $50,000 in business. I've had friends fuck me over. I've had all kinds of shit happen. But guess what? It was an adventure. To me, when you look back on your life, you should be able to look back on this shit and say it's like a movie. But most people don't want to go through the pain period. So let me show you some, 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 some real free game here. If you're willing to go through the pain period, you're going to become successful. Everybody follow that. 
I want to tell you the four stages that you're going to go through. This is well documented when you're trying to become successful and why if you're willing to go through the pain period, if you're willing to go through the period of being bad, it's almost inevitable that you will be successful. And this is a concept that I learned that I'm going to drop on y'all right now. So is anybody here familiar with the four stages of learning? Learning, I also learn how to enjoy your losses. Hell yeah. I love the losses. And we're going to talk about that too. We're going to talk about long-term motivation here in a second. So I don't know if any of y'all familiar with the four stages of learning. The four stages of learning, right? So whenever you learn a concept, there's four basic stages of learning that we all go through. I'm going to run y'all through these real quick, and then you're going to understand, okay? So stage one is what we call unconscious incompetence. So unconscious incompetence means like you don't know what you don't know. So you jump out here, you're trying to be an entrepreneur, you're trying to get in a new field. What happens? What happens when you first start something? You don't know what you don't know. Anybody experience that? Maybe you're trying to start a business. Maybe you're trying to get into speaking. Maybe you're trying to create content. Whatever it is, anybody had that feeling of, hey, this is how you drop. This, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. It, drop a why. Drop a why. Drop a why if that makes sense. <laughs> he said NLP. Has anybody ever had that feeling of, I just don't know what the fuck is going on completely? Like, you just feel completely, I don't know what's going on. And I'm going to give you a very, very um, simple example that we've all experienced with this, right? So I see a couple whys coming through on the chat, right? We've all experienced that, I don't know what's going on, that feeling of unconscious incompetence, because you don't even know what the hell you don't know. When I jumped into business, it was actually beneficial to me because I had no idea of how I could fuck up in business. So I just jumped out there. But... It was so overwhelming because I had to acquire knowledge because I didn't know, right? So then if you go on, you go through this pain period, you, you, you keep grinding it out, eventually you hit the next phase of learning, which is called unconscious, no, conscious incompetent, right? Conscious incompetent, which basically means now you know what you don't know. A lot of people who get to this point, this will be the end. And the reason they'll stop right here at conscious competence is because, what's up, hey, Jax? The reason they'll stop at conscious competence is because now this is the most scariest part of your entrepreneurial journey. I'm going to tell y'all that right now. Why? Can anybody guess why being aware of what you don't know is the scariest part of your entrepreneurial journey and why it'll be the time you're most likely to quit and never find your destiny or your passion or your purpose? Can anybody guess what that is? I'm over here on Facebook too, so I'm looking at I'm looking at different stuff over here too. Can anybody guess why it might be the the work the hardest time in your journey? I'm just wait a couple seconds. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell y'all why. When you know what you're not aware of, it's easier for you to quit. I'll give you a prime example. Let's say. I don't know if you've ever been to the pool. They have these huge diving boards at the pool. My boy Ford can't lose, checking in. They had these huge diving boards. I remember um, it was on TC Jester in Houston. They used to have this huge diving board. And this diving board was maybe like, I want to say, might be 100 feet tall. And people were always scared to jump off of it. But what I would notice was that when people got to the top of the dive, they could climb up the diving board no problem. But the second they became aware of how high the shit was when they got to the edge of the diving board, most people did not jump. They climbed right back down because they were too scared. So when you become consciously competent, what happens is you start saying, I know what can go wrong. So now I'm scared to do it. Does that make sense? Drop a Y if that makes sense. Drop a Y if that makes sense. Now that you're at the stage of competent, Competent, conscious competence. Damn, fucking me up. Conscious competence. That's what happens. Fear, self-doubt. Exactly. Now, the reason I say this, or the reason I bring up this point, is because what is happening here is most people don't go through the pain period, the point of being bad long enough to get to the next stage, which is where your conscious competence. Now, when you first learn to drive a car, you may know how to drive a car, but you got to really focus, right? You can't sit back and be cool and shit like this because you got to think about how to control the car. So this is, a, this is an example of being consciously competent of something. When I first got into business, 
I got to a point where I knew a bunch of knowledge, but everything was very difficult to do because I knew how to do it. I knew how to get to the point where I could make things work, but I had to exert a lot of energy, a lot of effort, a lot of force into it because this is the next stage. Most people never get here. I don't give a damn if you're trying to speak. I don't, think you're, I don't give a damn if you're trying to do content, business, or whatever it is. In order to get to a point where you're consciously competent, this is to be the point you're striving to first. Because once you get here, you don't feel so much anxiety. And then it's time for you to really understand that you're moving towards your destiny. So when it comes to being consciously competent, that's the next phase. Now, the holy grail of all of this, and this is what we all should be striving for on the live, on, the, on Facebook, on YouTube. This is what we be, should be striving for. To become consciously, oh no, unconsciously competent. What does this mean? Without thinking, without any knowledge of anything, we just can simply do. This is a person who, they could, they could be good at a game and they don't even have to think about it anymore. They just have the muscle memory. They're so good at this, it becomes unconsciously competent. And the reason this is important because remember, I talked about going through the pain period. So when it comes to finding your destiny, you may go through something and feel like, well, because I didn't like this this day, well, fuck it. I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm literally going to tell you in this live stream exactly how you can map your destiny and understand if it's something that really resonates with you. It's called a Eularian destiny. We're going to talk about that a little later. But the point is, what I'm getting at is this. If we want to be successful in life, we have to be willing to go through these four stages. So these four stages tie to how you're going to learn. If you're going to be an entrepreneur, if you're going to be successful in anything, I don't care what it is. If you want to find your passion and purpose, what's going to have to happen is you're going to have to go through these four stages. And there's this great concept called crossing the abyss. So what crossing the abyss basically is, is there's this old fable basically where a person went out into the world and they had to cross this fog. It was the abyss. You couldn't see anything in it. And a lot of people who went into the abyss, they never returned. You could hear the screams through the fog. And a lot of people never dared to travel through the abyss. But a lot of people walk and they would start taking steps into the abyss. And you would see the, the, the land behind you disappear. And a lot of people would get scared at that moment. And they would stop. They wouldn't continue on. They wouldn't, they wouldn't further themselves into the abyss. But what eventually happens, if you've got the courage to continue going, you eventually reach the other side of the abyss. And even though you've been through hardships and troubles, the person who comes out on the other side of that abyss is the person who can create the things that you want and can be successful like you want. And I think that's what I want most people to take from this is that the point where you cross the abyss is important to finding your destiny. This is not an easy thing. You might have to try different things. You might have to go out into the world and experiment with different things that you don't like. You might even have to have failed businesses. But at the end of the day, if you can find your passion and purpose, it is the most important thing you can do in your life. Does that make sense? Drop a why if that makes sense. Why this is something that you need to find. And then we're going to go right into talking about levels of motivation. So how you can have infinite motivation no matter what. This is, this is going to be a huge, huge game we drop in the day. Okay. P. Harris, what's good? Appreciate you for checking in. All right. So let's talk about the levels of motivation. We talk about finding our passion and purpose, and this is going to be very important. So the levels of motivation. A lot of people understand motivation, but I want to give you a different perspective here today about the power of being motivated at a deeper level, something that will never leave you, no matter how bad things get, no matter how down you get, no matter what happens in your life. And this goes down to the first real piece that you need to understand to lock in your passion and purpose. So there's four levels of motivation I'm going to talk about. There's four levels, right? So at the lowest level is the one we're all familiar with, petty motivation. It doesn't mean petty because they're bad or anything like that. They're just lower level. And they're not strong enough to sustain you through hardships and down times in your life. Example of a petty motivation. I want to stun on these niggas. I want to fuck them. I want to be better than them. I'm going to show them. That type of shit is what we call a petty motivation. Now, if that motivates you and it gets you off the, off the couch and gets you started in business because you want to prove people wrong, that's great. I would say use that motivation. What up, P. Harris? You're like, no, I, I see you. 
you already know that you should use that motivation if that helps you. I'm not a person who, I'm not here to try to tell you there's a moral way to get started. Whatever gets you off the couch, whatever gets you into the game, use it. If petty motivations, if you, if it's cars, if it's houses, if it's women, I don't really give a damn what it is. If it gets you off the couch, if it gets you in the game, use it. That's what I would tell anybody. But I'm just telling you, these deeper levels of motivations are going to push you a lot further. So next we have what we call short-term motivation. Short-term motivations is where a lot of people get stuck because this is stuff that we have to do. And you, these short-term motivations are right in front of you, so you have to deal with them. For example, rent's due. You got to deal with this. You don't have food to eat. You have to deal with this. You have something that's due in the next month, bills, all this type of stuff, short-term motivation. Something you're going to do maybe the next week, maybe two weeks, maybe a month from now. It's like a short-term motivation. Stuff that we have to deal with right away. Does that make sense so far? Drop a Y in the chat if that makes sense. Does everybody get that idea of like what short-term motivation is? Drop a Y if that makes sense. So for y'all see me looking in different directions, I'm uh, if you're just joining, I'm looking at Facebook and I'm looking at Instagram, YouTube, all that stuff. All right. So, OK, yeah, exactly. So basically. Short term motivation motivates us in the short term. These are short term things we got to do. Then we have what we call intermediate motivation. Intermediate motivation ties to something that's going to happen, say, in the next month to six months or something like that. And why it's important to understand this is because this has to do with more your goals. This has to do more with your, OK, this year I want to accomplish this. You know, when people make New Year's resolutions, that's an example of an intermediate motivation. This motivation is a lot weaker because it's a little bit further away from us. But I'm going to tell you how to align all these and get a deep sense of motivation. Something that's going to allow you to wake up every morning. So intermediate motivation is something that motivates you in, say, the short term. Hey, six months from now, I want to move out the house. Uh, a couple months from now, I want to get my first car. A couple months from now, I want to start my business and have it making a certain amount of money. These are intermediate motivations. And if they're tied to something higher, they are great. But if it's not tied to these next things I'm going to talk about, it doesn't matter. So let's talk about long term motivation. One of the things that I heard a long time ago that will really change everything, and I, I mean this, change everything, is finding long-term motivation. Long-term motivation is not the deepest level of motivation. I'm going to tell you that. What's up, black Chinese? It's not, the, it's not the deepest level of motivation. But what it is is it's basically a motivation that gives you a long-term roadmap. And what I've found is that people who have a long-term roadmap, they tend to be more successful. So what does that mean? So long-term roadmap basically applies to the fact that a person looking back on their life, let's say you go 10 years from now, what are you motivated to accomplish in the next 10 years? Looking back on it, you can work backwards and say, how do I get there? But I would even argue, not the strongest level of motivation, right? So now let's talk about deep motivation. This is the thing that no matter what happens, no matter what happens in my life, no matter what I go through, no matter what failures, no matter what's going on in the world, I'm always motivated because I have this deep level of motivation. And this has to go with your mission in life. See, most people don't believe they have a mission in life. And I can guarantee you have a mission in life. And we're going to talk about how to chart your Eularian destiny in just a second. But having your mission in life, and like I said, you have to go through the pain period. You have to go through the stages. You have to cross the abyss in order to get to this point. This destiny that you have, this mission in life, no matter what's going on, that's going to allow you to be motivated no matter what. I'm going to give you an example. I know I created this company to help people reach their full potential and live a life for free. So basically, when I get on these live streams, when I talk to people, I know that's my mission. That's my life's mission. And by having that life's mission, what ends up happening is that no matter what, I always call back to that mission if I want to be successful. Does that make sense? I'm going to always call back to my mission to be successful. I heard somebody say a long time ago, let's say you had to make sure that you went, went to work to feed your child, right? How hard would it be to get up and work? So your mission in life, and we're going to talk about that in a second, how we do this. Your mission in life, that's basically what keeps the motivation to the point of where you can say, hey, you know what? Shit's fucked up right now. I'm going to get off the floor anyway. 
It's the thing that's going to make it where when you sit back and look at everything that's going on in your life, you can say, it's easy for me to stay motivated because I've mapped this out. The stuff that we talked about before this, it adds on top of this. But understanding that it's important for you to sit down and say, hey, what is my mission in life? It's got to be something bigger than the petty motivations, which are just, hey, how am I going to make money and stuff like that? Although make a bunch of that. Run the bag up. I'm not one of these people like, oh, no, nah, you shouldn't worry about money. No, no, run, run it up. But what I am saying is, in order to be motivated throughout anything, this is what I'm saying. If some bad shit happens to you, even if you have a lot of money, you can lose motiva motivation. I'm going to give you all a story. I had a friend of mine who was a millionaire, burned through millions of dollars. But whenever I used to talk to him, he used to always talk about how he didn't have any motivation. He didn't have any long-term goals. He didn't have anything long-term that he was striving for. So it was easy for him to burn through his money. It was almost like looking at a person trying to buy happiness for real because they weren't happy with where they were going in life. And we've seen this all the time. There's multiple celebrities. You've probably seen this thousands of times. Drop a Y if you've seen this before. You've probably seen this thousands of times. You've probably seen this thousands of times of a person who reaches a level of success and they're just not happy with it. it just doesn't do anything for them. I think about that. Imagine getting everything you want and doesn't do anything for you. And it's because they don't have a life mission. Now you take people who do have a life mission. Even if you have a bad day, even if things get off, what's going to end up happening is you're going to come back to that mission and say, damn, this is my passion and purpose. Right? That makes sense? Everybody follow me? Drop a Y if you follow me. Drop a Y if you follow me and that makes sense. Okay, perfect. Perfect. I see you. All right. So with that being said, and if you over here and you ever want to watch on Facebook, you know, you can see the, the screen and I got the audio and stuff like that. But anyway, <laughs> with that being said, let's talk about the U project. Right. Last week, I talked about this on one of the live streams and I said that anybody who doesn't shrink from self crucifixion cannot fail to be successful. So I told you the biggest mindset that you can have to be successful is the self-awareness principle which means that if you're aware of where you're going wrong or you can be aware enough to know that you have blind spots. So when other people are telling you advice and stuff like that, you can still follow along. And guess what? You can't fail to be successful. I promise you that. The project of you in our life, we're looking to become something. We don't know what it is necessarily, but we're looking to become something. In order to do that, we have to be willing to do a little digging. It's like mining for treasure. So when I started off, I did a lot of stuff. I did a film company. I've done uh, media companies, I've done uh, marketing, I've done advertising, I've done um, public speaking. And what I realized is I want to have something that can encompass all of those things. So the things themselves weren't necessarily what my passion was. And I think this is where a lot of people get confused when it comes to being successful. The thing itself, me marketing and advertising, we built a, we built a web development agency. We, we built a media company. So we do websites, we do digital advertising, we do marketing for companies, we do creative video shoots, we do all that stuff, right? But those things in themselves are not my mission. They are under my mission, they encompass my mission, but they're not the things themselves. But in, in order to understand I wanted to do something that encompassed all those things, I had to go out there and find it for myself. Does that make sense? In order to understand that me building a website, me doing a video, me marketing and advertising, those things were just under my life's mission. That's what I had to do. Does everybody follow me? Drop a Y if you follow me. So what I'm telling you is this. For us to truly become a you project, this you project of working on you. What's up, Danielle? Good to see you. Appreciate you for stopping by. My girl Danielle in there. Where you been? You been you been out of town and shit? Been crazy? But anyway, um, yeah. So the project of you, what that basically says is this. Once we map this Eularian destiny, what we're going to talk about in just a second, what you're going to understand is how to start digging for the treasure that is you. Once you find out and go through all those things, you'll realize that what you do, whether it's I'm going to go build a business. Entrepreneurship is still not my mission. It's something that allows me to actualize my mission. And a lot of people get it twisted when they talk about finding their passion and purpose. We've been tricked to believe that 
oh, I have to be a business person. I have to be an entrepreneur to find our passion and purpose. But the reality is, all I'm telling you is, you might enjoy working at a job. And if it gives you fulfillment, you may be on to what your passion and purpose is. But there are some of us who I know if I work a regular job, it just doesn't work for me. I've tried it before. So if I wouldn't have tried it, how would I have found my passion and purpose? You follow me? So what we're going to talk about here in a second of this project of self-awareness, first you got to understand this is a project of you. Always self-awareness. You're going to be building yourself constantly. And you're going to take the next couple months. If, you, if, you, if you're kind of, once I tell you what this Eulerian destiny is, if you're kind of already scratching the surface of it, you're going to already know kind of what direction you should go. Appreciate it, Danielle. You're going to already know what direction you should go. But by having this, you might have to take some time. If you're just starting off, you have no idea where the fuck to start. You might have to take some time to go out in the world and, and learn about your destiny. But I'm going to give you something to map your destiny right now. Does that sound good? Drop a Y if that sounds good. I'm about to give you a tool right now, the most practical way I know that I found to map your destiny out and start giving you a direction of what you should do in life. Drop a Y if that, if that sounds good. Drop a Y if that sounds good. And then we're going to get right into it. Like I said, I appreciate everybody for sticking with me. I appreciate everybody sticking with me on Facebook and YouTube. I appreciate everybody. And like I say, don't worry if you missed any of this information because it's always on. You can always go watch it on YouTube later in the week. We replay it on Fridays. And you can always uh, watch it on Facebook, anywhere like that. It'll be up. So if you missed any information, we had a great talk today. But let's talk about the Eulerian destiny. All right. So the Eulerian destiny, and you can look this up online if you want a visual of this. What's going on, Josh? And you can look this online if you want a visual of this. So it's basically four areas that we want to analyze, four areas that we want to analyze in order to discover what our destiny is. So Eulerian destiny, and that's set with an E, because I remember people going to look it up and they'd be like, it's E-U, Larian, L-E-R-I-A-N, I believe, if you want to look it up. But basically, one is what you grew up around. So what things in your life did you grow up around? And we want to find where these things intersect that I'm talking about. So think of it as four circles, and the thing that intersects between all of them is what makes you, it, what, what maps your destiny. Okay, so what'd you grow up around? So me, I grew up in an environment around people who like to speak, people who like to talk, people who like to express themselves, and people who were very big on the acquisition of knowledge in teaching. I fundamentally grew up in a house of education, so my, my grandmother, not so much traditional education, but my grandmother was big on educating yourself and becoming a bigger, educa uh, more educated person. So when people see me right now and they're like, man, you're always reading books, you're always educating yourself, well, that's just part of my Eulerian destiny because that's what I grew up around. I grew up around people like that. I grew up around people who speak. I grew up around people who entertain. I grew up around those things, right? And I want you to focus on something positive, of course, because you could have grown up around drug dealing and shit like that, because I did too. I just want y'all to know that before y'all be like, oh, well, I don't grow up around. So you grew up around certain stuff, but let's just focus on the positive elements that you grew up around. What do strangers say about you? Now, I don't know if y'all know this, but I remember when I was in high school, I remember giving a presentation to the class and people were like, man, you can speak really good. You should one day be a public speaker. And then when I went to college, I used to be in, I joined the fraternity. I joined Omega Psi Phi in college. And in college, I used to lead a lot of the meetings and stuff like that. But even when we had campus meetings and somebody had to go speak on behalf of the fraternity, I would go up there. And even people from the other fraternity sororities and all the people on campus would come with me afterwards and be like, bro, you could, you could really speak, bro. Like you should go speak. I remember sitting in my boys' meetings the world's most hated promoter, and they were like, bro, you can speak. So what do strangers say about you? What are some of the things that strangers have said about you? That's like, okay, yeah, this is, this is some real shit that they said about me that you can take. Now, remember, we're combining these things. We're not looking at one by itself. So just because other people told me that, people have told me a lot of other stuff too, but just because people told me that, I didn't take that at face value, right? So let's talk about what can you talk endlessly about? If you've been on these live streams the last couple of weeks, you know that I can sit here for hours. I literally could sit here all day and talk on the live stream. If I didn't have anything else to do, I would literally sit down. If y'all asked me 100 questions, I would, be, I would want to sit down and answer every single question. You could ask me anything about business, anything like. If I can help you, I'll sit here all day and answer questions. I can talk endlessly about business, self-improvement, how to improve people's lives. It's just something I love. Even as a, even 
as a young kid, I used to always like to fix things and make things better and help people out. So this is not something that just appeared, right? But remember when I was talking about that life's mission, what we have to figure out, and we talked about this um, three weeks ago on the live stream, our vision that encompasses everything. And I gave you all a practical way to go about mapping your vision. But we have to figure that out. So if we figure that out, we know what we grew up around. I told you what I grew up around. What do strangers say about you? And what can you talk endlessly about? Are you following me so far? Right? Drop a Y if you're following me so far. What you grew up around, what do strangers say about you, and what can you talk endlessly about? If you want to look this up, it's called a Eulerian destiny. And this is the best thing I've found to just put you in the right, start pointing you in the right direction to start thinking about these things. To start thinking about what's your true destiny, what's your true path and purpose. It's called a Eulerian destiny. So drop a Y if that makes sense what I just said. So drop a Y. Okay. All right. Perfect. So the next thing is, what have you been around the past five to 10 years? What experience did you have? Okay. So me, like I said, joining the fraternity in college, I was basically building businesses. I, I, I created programs. I created things in college that I had never, that had never existed before. So I realized in college that this was something I wanted to do. I wanted to be a person who creates things like whether it's companies, whether it's businesses, whether it's lifestyles, whether it's building other people up, I wanted to be a creator. So I knew I grew up around education. I knew I grew up around people who always strive to be better, improve yourself. I grew up around that culture. Uh, strangers used to say, man, you are great at speaking. You're a great creator. You're great. You got a great creative mind, right? I can talk endlessly about business success. I can, I'm just nerdy about a bunch of shit. I can talk endlessly about things, just how things work, breaking it down, dissecting those things. I can talk endlessly about those things, right? And then the five, past five, 10 years, well, right now it's pretty simple because the past five to 10 years, I've been building a business. So, But before that, let's go back before I was building a business, I was always engaged in things where I had to create things, where I had to build something up. So it became easy for me to understand that what could I take those four things and what can I look at in the world that would encompass everything? So I became an entrepreneur. And the reason I became an entrepreneur is because, one, I grew up around self-improvement. As an entrepreneur, we have to constantly improve. What's going on, Carla? We have to constantly improve. What do strangers say about me? Somebody who can speak, somebody who can lead. So I became a leader of an organization so I could constantly speak and lead. You can see I'm on the live streams talking. I do these live streams every week just to give free information because... This is a part of that destiny. I'm combining all those things. What can I talk endlessly about? If you've been on this live stream, <laughs> whether it's Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram, you know, this, we've been on here about, I want to say an hour so far, 50 minutes. And basically, nonstop, I've been going in about this because I'm so passionate about this, helping people find their passions and purpose in past five, 10 years of experience. Before that, I was actively building things. I was actively putting things together. So... You have to take this, and I'm going to say it one more time so you can get it. What did you grow up around? What do strangers say about you? What can you talk endlessly about? And what have you been doing for the past five to ten years? The reason this is important to finding your passion and purpose is because this will point you in the right direction. Now, when we think about what can I do that encompasses all of those things. So this is how we get passion. If you can talk endlessly about something, you probably can turn it into a business. That's just the way the world is now. People make millions of dollars playing video games online. You can literally go watch somebody on YouTube right now, play a video game, watch them play a video game, and they make money off it. People do book reviews. People review cameras. People review electronics. If you like electronics, you can literally get on the internet nowadays and talk about electronics and make millions of dollars. I remember being at the YouTube event when they came down here. I, I, we got invited into the YouTube event because... Um, we was getting mentored by Matthew Knowles, and it was at his, his building. And I remember the guy said that there's a lady who opens gifts online. All she does is open gifts. Nobody's ever seen her face. But at the time when we talked to him, they said she made $22 million that year simply getting on YouTube and opening gifts because kids love it. They eat the shit up. So if somebody can make $22 million, never seen their face, all you see is their hands opening gifts, you don't think that you can... Find something you're passionate about, something you can talk endlessly about, and become successful doing that. And if you're willing to go through those different stages of learning, like I said, you will become good at this shit. But the thing is, we never, we usually don't have a direction to even point ourselves in. But now you have something tangible. What did I grow up around? 
What do strangers say about me? What can I talk endlessly about? And what have I been doing for the past five to 10 years? How can I combine all those things into one thing that I can start focusing on and turn into my life's mission? Helping people reach their full potential, people, my, my vision for my company encompasses all those things. What can you do to encompass all those things? My goal is to help you create one, help create one million seven-figure businesses. I want you to be one of those seven-figure businesses. But that encompasses my life's mission. Does that include things for myself? Of course. But that's going to happen because I'm giving service to the world. I always recommend that you do something that gives service to the world. Because at the highest level, I think that's the most fulfilling. You could go trace all the other stuff. We talked about the levels of motivation. If petty motivations get you started, that's fine. I have I had petty motivations starting out. I wanted to prove people wrong. Yes, for sure. It got me to where I'm at. But to take it further, to take it deeper, we have to start understanding that we have to start getting life missions. We have to start getting this. We have to map our destiny. Because when we map our destiny, what happens is we start getting to a higher level. And that higher level that we can achieve comes down to the fact that we have a greater purpose. And that's what I want for you. I want you to find a greater purpose. Something bigger than, you know what, I just get up and I make money. I've seen people make money. Lambos, Rolls Royce trucks, all this type of shit. And I've also seen some of those people who are not happy. And I've definitely seen some of those people who are happy. So I'm not one of these people acting like just because you get money, you can't be happy. You definitely can be happy. What's the old saying? It's better to cry in a Rolls Royce than a Honda Civic. I get that. And I believe that's true, right? You got something nice to be in? It's better to be in that than be broke in the same position and unhappy. But by mapping our destiny, what we just talked about, this Eulerian destiny, and I repeat it one more time, what you grew up around? What do strangers say about you? What can you talk endlessly about? And what have you been doing for the past five to 10 years? That's powerful. And to be honest with you, I want to thank everybody for being on the stream today, but if you want to go deeper with this, I want you to check out how to start a business in 30 days.com. This is literally a program we put together to help you with all of this stuff. This is a step by step process to take you from starting to building a business. It doesn't matter where you're starting off in life. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter where you come from. This process that we use is a four step process that helps build businesses fast. And we even have a portion that goes through mindset that will help you find your destiny, will help you put your life in order to give you direction of where you're going. It's 50 plus videos where we go in depth about everything here. More than I could ever go in on this live stream by itself. We go in depth on everything. How to start a business in 30 days.com. This is the fastest way to build a successful, profitable, freedom based business from the comfort of your home. You're literally going to be sitting back at the house watching these videos from your house and learning information that can help you find your destiny and live a future where you're in control. Don't you want to do that? Don't you want to live a life where you have control of your day, where you feel good waking up every day because you know you're going to be going towards what you want to do? You're not living on somebody else's terms. That's what how to start a business in 30 days. We literally just uh, dropped the price from $297 and it's like the lowest it's ever been. And that's because I want as many people to get it as possible. I've made a mission for myself. I told you all what that was. Help create one million seven figure businesses. I want you to be one of them. So when you get over there, you need the 50 plus videos, and we're going to give you Making Money 101, which is basically a seminar that I did that teaches you how to make money no matter where you're starting out. If you're at your mom's house, if you're coming out of corporate America, you're broke right now, you need some extra income on the side, I teach you how to do that and use that to fund your entrepreneurship journey. I've also got my friends to talk in there. I got one of my good friends, House Buying Brian. You can look him up on Instagram. He makes a lot of money off real estate. But he's even showing you how to get started in real estate with no money. So I've added stuff like that because I want to give you vehicles to success. And I'm going to be bringing more people on there in order to add more levels of success. But if that's something you're interested in, if you want to know exactly how you can do this and have a step-by-step -step process that holds your hand, check out how to start a business in 30 days.com. How to start a business in 30 days.com. So I want to thank y'all for coming on here. I think this was a great talk. We're talking about how to find your passion and purpose, finding something deeper in life, a mission in life something that you're reaching for, something that you're building towards, it's going to allow you to be more successful than you ever thought. And it's going to allow you to go through the periods when things are difficult, when things are tough. And it's going to help you become more successful. So before I get off of here, if you have any questions, drop your questions. I can answer any questions real quick before I hop off the stream. If you have any questions, 
Drop them in the chat right now. Anything you want to say to me, anything like that before I hop off of here. I'm just going to be looking between Facebook um, and all the other chats. So that's why I'm looking over here. If you got any questions before I go, just let me know and then we'll wrap it up and we'll be, we'll be on here next week. Remember, live streaming every Monday at 7 p.m. Central Time and the replay will be at 7 p.m. Central Time on Friday. So if you come in late, you weren't able to find the beginning of the live stream, don't worry, you can go to Facebook and watch it on the Massive Action Movement Facebook or you can watch the replay. It's a live replay, so it's similar. You get the same like live experience on Fridays on YouTube. So any questions, drop the questions in the chats. So I'm going to look around. If we don't have any questions, I'm just going to wrap it up. If you have any questions, just let me know. And uh, yeah. Any questions before we get out of here? Any questions before we get out of here? All right. So if there's no more questions, um, that's been how to find your passion and purpose. I appreciate everybody for being on the Instagram today, the Facebook, the YouTube. I appreciate everybody for being on here. This is a great talk today. A lot of information. I'll leave it up on my Instagram for a little bit if you want to go back through it. We've been on here for about an hour, so it's just a good hour of good content. But basically, this is one of the most important things that you can do is go find your passion and purpose. And with that being said, make sure you go check out How to Start a Business in 30 Days at howtostartabusinessin30days.com. It is literally the fastest way that you're going to be able to do this. Not only find your passion and purpose, but be able to build a business that's going to allow you to be successful and create a lifestyle on your own terms. How to start a business in 30 days.com. I want to thank everybody who joined the live stream today. I want to thank everybody who was a part of this, everybody who came out and shared their comments, in, interacted in the chat, all that type of stuff. I appreciate everybody for being here. And if you want to check out more, remember every Monday at 7 p.m. CST, we will be live streaming. Thank y'all for coming through, and I will see y'all next time.